The assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Mohammed Najib Azmi Mikati, President of the Council of Ministers of the Lebanese Republic. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. I have the great pleasure in welcoming His Excellency Mohammed Najib Azmi Mikati, President of the Council of the Minister of the Lebanese Republic. I invite him to address the assembly. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. President of the 77th session of the United Nations General Assembly, Your Excellency, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Antonio Guterres, Heads of state, government, and delegations, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to extend to you, Mr. President, my warmest congratulations on your assumption of the presidency of the General Assembly at its 77th session. I also take this opportunity to thank His Excellency Mr. Abdullah Shahid for his good stewardship of the previous session and for all his effort in this regard. I would also like to commend His Excellency, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Guterres, for his continued work to promote the role of the United Nations and to develop its work. The world today is at a very delicate stage of armed conflicts and interrelated crises that are of concern to us all. There is no better place to deliberate these challenges than this hall. This hall brings together all the states of the world that are brought together by the Charter of the United Nations. My country is a proud contributor to the drafting of the Charter. We've had decades of fruitful cooperation with the United Nations. In this context, I am pleased, Mr. President, to thank you and through you, the United Nations Organization, with all its branches and specialized agencies, and those in particular operating in Lebanon. I thank you for the efforts that you are making to help Lebanon and contribute to mitigating the consequences of the crippling economic and financial crisis it is undergoing. I would like also to thank the United Nations Interim Force in Lebanon, UNIFIL, for its sacrifices and effort to maintain stability in southern Lebanon. This is in close coordination with the Lebanese Armed Forces. Here, through you, we look forward to strengthening the Lebanese Armed Forces' military capabilities and alleviating its financial burdens. In this context, we reaffirm Lebanon's full commitment to the full implementation of the provisions of Security Council Resolution 1701 and all the resolutions of international legitimacy. With regard to the demarcation of our maritime borders under the auspices of the United Nations and with the commendable American mediation. Here, I would like to reaffirm Lebanon's absolute commitment to its sovereignty, rights, and wealth in its territorial waters and its economic, exclusive economic zone. We reiterate our sincere desire to reach a negotiated solution that is long overdue. I am pleased to inform you that we have made significant progress and hope that we will soon reach the desired outcome Lebanon is determined to protect its national interests and the well-being of its people, its wealth, and to invest its national resources. We are fully aware of the importance of the promising energy market in the Eastern Mediterranean for the prosperity of the economies of the countries in the region and to meet the needs of importing countries. Mr. President, Lebanon believes in the leading role played by the United Nations. We reaffirm our commitment to the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the Paris Climate Agreement. We also believe in the international frameworks that address disarmament issues in their various forms. We also welcome the 
work aimed at establishing an international understanding to rid the Middle East of weapons of mass destruction in implementation of General Assembly Resolution 73-546. We commend the previous sessions of the conference. We look forward also to the successful conclusion of the third session of the conference, which would be held under the presidency of Lebanon next November. We look forward to contributing to supporting the establishment of a zone free of weapons of mass destruction in the Middle East. Mr. President, many countries in the world today are experiencing severe economic crises, the causes of which are multifaceted and well known. They've had a major impact on all aspects of life. It has made it imperative on many governments and countries to resort to extraordinary measures to try to alleviate the impact of this crisis on their peoples. As for my country, Lebanon, we have been facing for several years the worst socioeconomic crisis in our history. This crisis has affected all institutions and put the majority of Lebanese under the poverty line. It has caused the migration of many y promising young cadres. Our homeland has lost the best of its young people in a brain drain, in addition to the unprecedented and severe economic deterioration, the collapse of the exchange rate of the national currency to its lowest historical levels and the closure imposed by the COVID-19 pandemic, in addition to the catastrophe of the Beirut pool explosion. In this connection, we are in pursuit of the truth. This is in addition to the consequences of the Syrian crisis and the burden of the displaced. In the midst of all of this, we found ourselves facing an unprecedented political crisis, which has made it necessary to tread very slowly and carefully in a political and economic minefield to remedy the situation and establish the appropriate grounds to contribute to getting out of the crisis. Mr. President, our government has succeeded in achieving many of its goals. The most prominent of these goals include holding parliamentary elections on time, despite the difficult circumstance in the country. But the road ahead of Lebanon is still arduous, long, and full of difficulties before we get out of this crisis. We are working with all our might and determination to overcome it successfully. In this context, our government has signed a preliminary agreement with the International Monetary Fund. From this rostrum, we pledge to proceed with all the legislative and administrative reforms necessary to overcome our present crisis. In this context, we always count on the assistance of Lebanon's international friends, led by the brotherly Arab states. of which Lebanon is an indispensable member for identity and a founding member of the League of Arab States. Lebanon's affiliation and identity as an Arab country and its leadership in adhering to Arab causes is a translation of the provisions of its constitution and the Taif Agreement, which ended the bloody civil war that ravaged my country. I must reiterate our full commitment to this agreement and our zero tolerance of any attempt to undermine its provisions. We also reaffirm our commitment to the principle of this association, which we have pursued since our previous government. This is an effort to, to keep our country as far away as possible from what it cannot sustain. The government of Lebanon also relies on the United Nations and its member states which through their commendable assistance to Lebanon have always emphasized that a capable and a prosperous Lebanese state is an urgent need for peace and security in the region and the world. In the context of efforts to address the economic crisis, our government is also working on a financial and economic recovery plan that complements our cooperation with the International Monetary Fund, and we are also working on a package of comprehensive structural and 
sectoral reforms that meet the requirements of the Lebanese people. It also provides them with a social safety net. We also are developing laws that ensure absolute transparency and combat the scourge of corruption. This scourge has increased as a result of the economic collapse. At the same time, we are working to relaunch the economy and to unlock its potential, especially for young people that we are responsible for. They are a beacon for hope for the success of a Lebanese economic model that is open to the world with pioneering opportunities. In this context, we appeal to brotherly and friendly countries to stand by Lebanon in its crisis, in its current ordeal, and to support it in order to get out of it and to address its serious repercussions on the Lebanese people, as well as its repercussions on the structure of the state. We look forward to reconvening of the Friends of Lebanon Conference, which has long been hosted by France in cooperation with the Friends and Brothers and Sisters of Lebanon. The existence of a sovereign and independent Lebanese state that is strong and capable, pr that protects the parliamentary democratic system and public and private freedoms, that believes in tolerance, fraternity and convergence and adopts a policy of dissociation and shuns away the policy of axes. This existence is an urgent need for security, peace, stability and prosperity in the region. Further, a strong central government that ensures the rule of law and its proper application, as well as enabling an enabling environment for businesses, productive sectors and services in their diversity, in accordance with market standards, free economy, and the requirement of the times and the ICT revolution. This is all an urgent need for the entire region and the best way for all of us to face the challenges of poverty, unemployment, extremism, and terrorism, and f avoiding falling into the unknown. Mr. President, for more than a decade, Lebanon has been at the forefront of the global public good by hosting a massive number of displaced Syrians. It is very difficult to provide accurate figures of those displaced Syrians in Lebanon. Since the beginning of the Syrian crisis, we have adopted an open border policy out of our belief in humanitarian considerations. However, today the displacement crisis is beyond our ability. It is also important to reaffirm that the Lebanese constitution and the consensus of all Lebanese prevent any integration or settlement naturalization on its territory. The only realistic sustainable solution is to achieve safe and dignified return for Syrians to their country within a roadmap that we should start working on as soon as possible with the cooperation of all parties. There should be also additional qualitative assistance provided to the Lebanese state and its different departments and infrastructure. The infrastructure is overstretched by the large influx of displaced persons for more than 10 years. Mr. President, the question of Palestine remains the main issue impeding the attainment of peace and stability in the Middle East. The injustice against the Palestinian people must be lifted. The sovereign and independent Palestinian state with Al-Quds al-Sharif as its capital must be realized. And the relevant international legitimacy resolutions must be implemented, including the decision and resolutions for the return of refugees. In the context of the debate on the Palestine refugees, allow me to emphasize the central role played by UNRWA in serving the goals and purposes of the UN by contributing to mitigating the suffering of the Palestine refugees and helping achieve a measure of regional development and stability. In this context, we express our deep concern at the agency's critical financial situation and the accumulated budget deficit. This jeopardizes the delivery of its services. We also reiterate Lebanon's welcome and support for all international efforts to bridge the deficit as the biggest challenge remains finding a sustainable solution in the financing gap. 
to the financing gap. Mr. President, Lebanon has a long history of culture. Lebanon has always promoted a message of peace, tolerance, and dialogue. While my country is undergoing a difficult period, the difficulties will not deter Lebanon and it, Lebanese from moving forward to re-establish their prosperity and strengthen the pioneering role they have always played internationally. We want Lebanon to be a form of conversion, convergence, not a form of division. We want Lebanon to be a space for dialogue, not competition. We want it to be a spiritual custodian that brings together the values of the divine religions and the values of truth and justice in this world. I'm confident that with the unity of its people and the help of its brothers and friends, we can achieve the aspired goal. In conclusion, I reiterate my thanks to the United Nations for its continued cooperation with Lebanon and its continued partnership with all member states that love and support Lebanon. And I reiterate my call to everyone to neutralize, to not involve Lebanon in all the conflicts in the region. The greater the challenges, the more we are willing to work together for the good of all our peoples. The recent successive crises have demonstrated the importance of international cooperation in addressing crises that are on the whole are transboundary in their nature. And I conclude with I conclude by referring to the beginning when the UN started its work um, to work together in solidarity and complementarity for the benefit and well-being of mankind through justice, security, peace, and sustainable development. We hope for a better world, especially in the Middle East. My best greetings to all of you. Thank you. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Council of Ministers of the Lebanese Republic for the statement just made, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency.